Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera, and I just wanna say thank you to all of you who showed up at the Mighty Oak to pick up a copy of Elevated, my new cookbook, and sat around and chatted for a bit. It was so nice to meet you. I hope we can do it again sometime. We are making a pork loin roast today in the sous vide. I just wanted to give you another option to turkey or chicken when making a dinner for maybe more than your family if you're entertaining or for a special event like Christmas. And this recipe is super simple. Again, I really try to make recipes super simple using ordinary ingredients that your whole family will enjoy. Written recipes are always available to my patrons on Patreon and you can find out more information below. So let's get started. The thing I love about the jewel is that it gives you a little video footage to show you what the texture is supposed to be like so you know what temperature you're supposed to cook it at. And this is the one I want at 144 so I will set that Oops, that's already set. And then set the time. And my roast is two and a half inches wide and it's gonna cook for two hours. So I'm just gonna heat up the jewel. Who would have thought in this day and age we would have connected sous vide devices? So it's an, it is you know what it is incredible because back in the day if you wanted a sous vide device at home it meant buying a huge countertop bath thing that uh, circulates your water and heats it up and now you can use any container get a sous vide device which is usually just a stick and you can use it um, in any pot that you have remember to always protect your countertop if you're not using the stove top to put your pot on so that you don't wreck your counters. Starting off with a two pound roast. I read somewhere that a four pound roast will serve four people. That's like a lot of meat. Like this can, I think can serve our whole family. Did I say what we're making? I said we we're gonna cook pork loin roast using the sous vide, but we're also making a mushroom gravy to go with it. I'm gonna season the roast with some salt and pepper. Just lightly season. You don't have to season all, well, all over, but lightly. Don't heavily season it. There's no way I would have been able to turn this around with chopsticks, that's for sure. I probably should have done everything at once. Some pepper. Okay, while I'm at it, I'm going to add my thyme now too. So we're using about a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and about a teaspoon of dry thyme. And if you have fresh thyme, you can use that instead. Another way to make sure you get all the seasoning, maybe easier, I'm not sure, is to just put all of your salt, pepper, and thyme into a small bowl, and then just sprinkle it evenly around the whole thing. But, you know, I'm like, why wash another bowl? I'm gonna put this in a silicon bag. You can use a sous vide bag or a food saver bag if you want, but I'm trying to reduce our plastic consumption. So I'm gonna put this in here. And earlier I checked to see if it fit, and I think it does. And one of the great things about sous vide is that it doesn't take much to season and the flavors will just infuse into the whole roast through the process of sous vide. Because what it's doing is cooking it under a vacuum. That's the, I guess the science behind it. And then it just pushes the flavor into the pork and it keeps it tender. So I'm just gonna squeeze the air out. And then we're just gonna wait for the water to to temperature. So these bags are pretty good. Sealing it without having to use a vacuum sealer. Another thing I love about using a sous vide device is that yes it takes a long time for it to cook because what it's doing is slowly cooking whatever you're making. In this case I have two hours but within that two hours I can be preparing the other sides, I could be chilling out, I could hang out with the kids. You can also hang out with me. 
Right. And you just plop it into the water, make sure the meat is submerged. And then I can click start and that will start my timer. And then it tells me what time it'll be ready. Yay, two hours now. What shall we do? We have about 20 minutes left for the pork. And so I'm gonna get started on my mushroom sauce. I have about half of a large onion that I'm just going to slice. Have half a pound of mushrooms. Should I just cut them in half? Maybe I'll kind of, kind of slice them into thick slices. I'm gonna heat up my cast iron pan. Nope. Whoa. Adding one tablespoon of butter. This is not as hot as I thought it was. I'm just impatient. Can't even wait for a pan to heat up. Okay, adding my onions. Okay, because my pan is a bit small, I'm gonna remove the onions. But if your pan is big enough, you can keep them in there. So I've browned the onions. It took just a couple of minutes. My pan's pretty hot. Looks like I need some more butter. So I'm just gonna add in this last, this other tablespoon of butter. The mushrooms are going in and we're just gonna leave them for a bit while they brown. Don't stir it too much. Kind of leave it here for about a minute or two until they brown on the bottom. It's kind of like searing the mushrooms before all the juice is released. Because once you start stirring them, I find it that it doesn't brown so much as just cook. So now I'm gonna move them around. I don't know if you can see. But there's some golden browning on the bottom of some of the mushrooms. Like here's one. And see how as soon as I start moving them around, it starts releasing liquid. You're only gonna cook them for about a minute or two. And we're gonna remove these as well. Whoops. My lonely mushroom. All right, so the pork is done. Just gonna remove it and we're gonna pat it dry. Have one cup of chicken broth. I'm just gonna add the juices from the pork as well into the cup. Cause you don't wanna waste that. Got some good flavor in there. Mm hmm. I'm gonna heat the pan back up. It doesn't look like much, does it? <laughs> you know why? Because it's kind of, you know, I have to say, like when you sous vide something, it always looks kind of like, I don't know, unappetizing gray. Okay, we're gonna melt another tablespoon of butter and then we're gonna get this going. Okay, we're going to sear about a minute per side. Let's do this side first. So really you're just browning it for color, it makes it more appetizing. It is perfectly cooked all the way through already. To be visually appealing, I would suggest browning it as well. Okay, that's it. Set that aside. I'm gonna get the mushrooms and the onion back in. I'm gonna add some salt, maybe about half a teaspoon, some pepper. If you wanted to, you can also add some thyme. I'm just gonna leave it like this. I think I have enough thyme on my pork. Okay, so I have a cup of chicken broth and I added the pork juices. So I'm gonna add that now. I'm just gonna try to scrape off any brown bits at the bottom from searing the pork. There wasn't much actually. Just bring this up to a simmer. I have about two teaspoons of cornstarch. I'm adding about a tablespoon of cold water. And cornstarch only dissolves in cold water, so you don't want to use hot water here. Otherwise you'll end up with one lumpy mess. The sauce is just starting to simmer. So we're gonna add this back in. And we're gonna cook it until it thickens. 
right? Sauce is thickened or gravy. So our son, he likes sauce, but not gravy. Mysterious, right? I think so. Maybe someone can help us out. Please leave in the comments below. What's the difference between a sauce and a gravy? Okay, I'm just gonna remove the string. So the other thing about sous vide that's awesome is that you don't have to rest it. It's already fully cooked and the juices are already, well, it's already super juicy. I don't know what the point of resting is. So that the juices don't spill out, I think. Right, look at that. That's looks super tender. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, you all ready for? Mm-mm-mm, the taste. I'm not a huge fan of the mushroom, but with this, it's a pretty darn good combination with the onions and the super tender pork. And also, I've never been a big fan of pork because I have these memories of pork chops that are as hard as uh, shuriken stars, you know, like ninjas throw and like... <laughs> be offended if you don't have the mushroom. Oh, it wasn't intentional that I didn't get a mushroom with that. Wow. You guys see that? Yep. There it goes. Mmm. 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 That was so tender and the seasoning was really simple, but the, the meat is well seasoned, like the, all the flavors swirling about. It wasn't anything complicated, right? It was just like three things that you put in there. Okay, let's have a mushroom. Mm. Good texture, not overly done and well seasoned and together with the pork and the onions, thank you very much. I love that onion and the gravy. It's gonna go fantastically on rice. It's good. Thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. I love bringing simple recipes using ordinary ingredients that your whole family can enjoy. And I had a friend that was flipping through my cookbook today and she was saying, this is all stuff I would order out. <laughs> so. If you can cook it at home, there's no need for takeout. And if you're cooking at home, let's make it good. And it doesn't have to be overly complicated to make a delicious meal. I also wanna wish you all a very Merry Christmas and uh, we'll probably have another couple of videos before the end of the year, so tune in. Till next time, be simple, ordinary, and joyful.